We're meeting today with Paul Nussbaum of the uh, L.A. Museum of the Holocaust. Your role here is? Uh, I'm on the executive board, and I'm also the board treasurer. The weekend of International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and with us is the, the featured actor of the motion picture, Son of Saul. Were you an actor before the role? No, not really. I, I, I'm an accidental actor. And um, I think this role required sort of a non-professional actor. I, I don't think... Uh, you know, the usual tricks and the usual routine of being a professional actor would have helped all that much anybody. It's it's a different sort of situation and, and the, the the need need of this the, what this role needs was needed it was was uh, something that sort of this whole distinction between amateur and professional did did not matter all that much because you had to come up with something from the stretch anyway. Mm -hmm. Were you raised in Hungary uh, in a Jewish family? I was adopted by a Jewish family at 12 and um, I mean raised in a sense of in a religious sense no even though my f grandfather was a synagogue goer, but he was reading the the sports section of the daily news in the synagogue. He, he he really went there just to be sure that they have a minyan, that they have ten, you know, male, the quorum. Um, but I did become um, religious observant myself as a teenager. Yeah, you, as a teenager, you became yeah. observant yeah. in Hungary. No, in Auschwitz, in Poland. In Poland. Yeah. But you, you say Auschwitz. Were you living in uh, the city of Auschwitz? Yeah. I, re I rented a room in the town called Oshienchim, and, and out at the outskirts of this town is the camp. Yeah. So how did this role come to you? By accident, if there is such a thing. Um, the director was a friend of mine, and, um, you know, he, he was looking for, for somebody, and a friend of his uh, brought me to his attention and uh, you know we tried we did lots of improvisations and at the end uh, he risked his first movie with me mm -hmm. how old were you when you assumed the role oh that was just uh, two years ago I was 47 years old it seems so realistic that it's hard to believe that you weren't set in a real setting of real haters that everyone in the picture was either an actor or an extra in the recreation of the the concentration camp scenes. You know, the director, Laszlo, had a great concept that uh, less is more. We, we did not uh, want to um, treat the subject matter in a frontal way. We didn't want to show too much. Um, we left uh, a, lo a lot what happened in the background out of focus for a person, for a reason, because there, there nothing is... Uh, as strong as as uh, the power of suggestion. Mm -hmm. So you, basically, the, we left it to the few viewers' I imagination to bring it home. In, in other words, we, we, we did not uh, did voyeurism. We did not show gruesome details as much as maybe other movies did because it 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 it, it does not. Uh, you come numbed and neutralized in the first five minutes if you're going to bomber your sensitivity with, with all that. And so the idea was to show in an extremely visceral and immersive way just one day of one man. Are, are you wearing the beard now to uh, d d distract people from recognizing you in public? No, there's nothing to do with that. No one is recognizing me. I mean, some people do maybe in Budapest, but not in America, no. So is your beard uh, for, for fashion? No, I don't do fashion. Why it's do you grow your beard long like this? Because I'm a religious Jew. You're a Torah mitzvah observant Jew? Yes, I hope so. I, I, I try my, I can't say my best because sometimes I don't get to that level of best, but I, I do attempt to be one, yeah. Was there something about performing this role in this picture which made you feel a, a stronger Jewish identity to become more observant? No. No, I, 
if if anything, it would would leave me less observant. I mean, obviously, you you really do struggle with God when it comes to the Holocaust. That uh, obviously, God's responsibility does not cancel the responsibility of the perpetrators. I mean, I'm, I don't try to shift, you know, the responsibility. Uh, from the from from the Germans under the Nazis uh, uh-huh. to God, it belongs to the Germans and some other collaborators around in Europe. But at the end of the day, you know, the Jewish people are in a covenant with God, and and the, the question is troublesome. You know, the, the Almighty did uh, intervene, but He could have and should have intervened earlier. And of course, you know, these are, the theodicy is a big question in theology, and we're not going to solve this in a five minutes interview, but, but there is evil in the universe, and if I would know God's reasons and thoughts, I would be him. But I'm not. He's infinite, I'm finite. And the best I can do is, is, is I, I won't let him off the hook. I, I still question, and I have every right to do so. That's what, that's what my ancestors did. But in the same time, I, I try to be honest, and yet he was late, but he did show up. In what way? Well, we were liberated, and, 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 and one-third of the Jewish people were perished, and 80% of our rabbis in the world were perished, but they were not able to raise us from the face of the earth. Are you today pursuing a, a career in acting, pursuing other, uh, seeking other acting roles? No, but I mean, I'm, I'm open to it, but I, I, I don't actively walk around looking for one. How has the role affected your career? I, I consider, not just because of my career, but I think the movie was a blessing for so many ways. It, it really brought millions to, 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 to watch this movie, which... To me, it's a very important movie, um, unlike others of this genre that were somehow always sugarcoating and talking about survivors and rescuers, which there were some, thank God, but they are the exception, not the norm. Two Jews out of three in Europe was murdered, so why to talk only the third? Let's talk about the first two sometimes as well. So the blessing on my life, I guess, people... Uh, more people open my books. I, I write poems. And so I, I got to places. I met fantastic people. Um, I, I visited communities from church groups all the way to, uh, convicted prisoners. And, 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 and I, and, and I had, had very, I was privileged to, to, to be around. And, and, and I, I got much, my life got much, uh, you know, richer by this experience. Mm-hmm. As, so as uh, fellow Hungarians, having Paul here, uh, uh, most people don't think of uh, Hungary. When they think of uh, the suffering of Hungarian Jews, they're thinking uh, 1956 and uh, communism. But uh, w- where does Hungary fit in in, uh, in the overall uh, scheme of uh, European anti-Semitism and uh, the Shoah? Prior to the Holocaust, the Hungarian Jewish community was a, by and large, a very assimilated uh, community in the Hungarian culture, in the Hungarian nation, uh, in business and finance and and uh, and industry. Uh, Hungary was a ally of Nazi Germany throughout most of the Second World War. When Hungary began to understand that the Germans were going to lose the war, they started putting out feelers to the Allies to get out. And the Nazis were aware of this, and they invaded Hungary on March 19th of 1944. In Hungary was the last intact Jewish community in Europe. The war was over. The Russians were at the eastern border of Hungary. And the Nazis were hell-bent on destroying the last intact Jewish community in Europe. And within 12 weeks worth of time, 
Uh huh. Over 436,000 Hungarian Jews were murdered with the very active assistance of the Hungarian Nazi government, the Interior Ministry, mm -hmm. the police, Terrible. Local, regional and local officials, mm -hmm. and clerical officials. Incredible. So it was a, it, it made no sense in, in the world of reality. Mm -hmm. Like so much of the Holocaust, it made no sense to the world of reality. But the only Jews to survive were a certain number of Jews in, in the capital. If, if I may broaden the, the, the discussion, here we are. We're a, a year from, from the, uh, the movie winning it an Oscar. And yet on Holocaust Remembrance Weekend, wasn't shown on HBO, only stars or encore ran it this weekend. But they, but a movie of this uh, gravity. This is a very, very important film. Uh, Gaze has talked about for the genre. I think it's it's so much more than that because it gives you a glimpse of a day on a planet that we don't live on. So I, I think this film is absolutely one of the most important films. Uh, to deal with the Holocaust. It is not dramatic, it is realistic. Geza, how do you feel about the, the fact that the, the movie was not has not been given on this holiday or com memorial commemoration greater uh, exposure? I, I have no idea what the reason for that, and I, honestly, I don't really follow what channel shows it when, but I, I do believe that this low-budget Hungarian movie to get all the way into the mainstream and get this high in terms of the awards, I think uh, we did better than anybody could have expected for, for such a low-budget Hungarian movie. In other words, the, this melodramatic, sentimental approach that, that, that really is after your emotions. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, we do respond emotionally when a loved one dies, but when, but when six million people die, then crying doesn't do justice. It's, 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 it has to have a different effect. It has to go to your stomach, to your dreams, but not to your tears. And, and uh, no one cries on, on our movie, you know, and, 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 and that is exactly what we wanted to do, is to um, be then and there. Not the, these people had no past, the Sonder Kurmando members, and they had no future. They were living minute by minute, and that sort of chaos, that's very extreme existential status, that's exactly what we, we wanted to somehow recreate in this movie. And, and by now, there is only one, just one, former Zondan Mondo member who is alive. He's 94 years old right here in L.A. And I'm going to meet him tomorrow, but he's a friend of mine. And when, he sh when we showed the movie to him, again, the only person on earth who is with us, who was, who, there. Who was there, who is living, and can testify if this movie got it right or not, and we asked him, please, you know, have your doctor here and don't turn the lights all the way, the, you know, out, out. Let's have a little light on and don't put the volume very much high and just stop the movie anytime you want. Make sure you have a cup of water next to you. He was very eager to see the movie. And he did not stop it or interrupt it for a second. And in the end, he said, I watched everything I could in the past decades. But boys, I don't know how, but you made it. You, this, this you got it, it right. You got it right. And that means to me more than anything, because he wasn't just a prisoner. Again, again, I mean, right now as we speak, estimation goes that it's about 100 Holocaust survivors passing every day. So there will be a time uh, sooner than we want when, there, when, when we will be all left alone. We will not have anyone with us from the camps. But... Those people out there in the barracks, as freezing and as, as hellish it was, they could have it, a bit of hope to survive. But these people, the Zonde Commando members, their f fate was sealed, and they knew it, and they had nothing to lose. That's why they rebelled. So he is the only one, and he saw our movie, and, and for me, that's the most, most telling uh, uh, approval. 
How did you get it so accurate? I mean, without having a son, so, uh, someone who was there uh, uh, as the production designer. Well, it's a teamwork again, and I think the brilliant concept belongs to the director, Laszlo. I mean, uh, I, you can say and argue uh, I could have maybe ruined it with a with, with, uh, with weak performance, but but again, I wasn't alone doing this, and and um, I don't know this. The, the, a lot, a lot of things had to come together uh, in this movie. I mean, the cinematographer they, they did an excellent job, and and from the very get go, we sort of were on the same page. You know, I I, I did some movies in my early twenties. And uh, there was something special uh, that we could feel every single day as we went out to shoot. There was something special here. Hard to tell why or or, or, or not. It's more like, a, you know, sometimes things just are right. There was, there was the right people at the right place. Mm -hmm. Do you find, either of you gentlemen, do you find the uh, the public resistant to a movie this, when I say graphic, I don't mean necessarily... Uh, uh, overly graphic, but intimate. It's extremely intimate. That you the public have to, you have to face the reality of what these people and their existence was. That, as Gaze has said, is much harder than movies that deal with groups of people, large groups of people. It's the power of this amorphous six million that's much easier to deal with than you deal with one family member by another family member or the destruction of the family units that is is more powerful but it's intense even in an attempt to try to get a glimpse into that unreal reality mm -hmm. And it's, but, it's, but but just to, to answer your question, I I, I have to say that um, um, you know I'm a father of four and I'm a teacher by profession, and um, you know our kids nowadays spend so much time online that something that happened 72 years ago really often seems like antiquity, like it's ancient history, and so I think what we had in mind. Is is the the young generation in particular, and and they are responding extremely well. You know, both high school and college students, and and this movie has been sold by now over fifty countries, and millions and millions of people saw it, except one country. This movie received fantastic reception, both from the public and from the reviewers. Except for one country. Yeah. Uh huh. Which one? Germany. This film has not been shown in Germany? It wasn't even bought by Germany. It was distributed by the Americans in Germany, and I think it's a shame on Germany. Now, was this because the distributor was not, not, no. not a good sales? No, uh, because it wasn't, it, it wasn't to the taste of the Germans. The Germans like Schindler's List. They like a movie about, you know, a good German who saves Jews. They, this was too dark for them. Uh -huh. That's just my understanding i mean you can come up with something else it's it's telling about something about the present german society it might have been received differently 10 20 years ago but i think it's very telling and outrageous that germany did not not i can say of course you can argue this is not a perfect movie uh -huh. but this sort of rejection i think it's it's it deserves some uh, some attention the intensity of the evil and the gigantic evil that was perpetuated is probably very difficult to face. And it's much easier to face when they look at it as crowds of people or a city or a country. Uh, this is the evil in the starkest unveiling and that is the power of this movie. So you're about to speak before an audience here at the LA Museum of the Holocaust you're about to speak before, I imagine, uh, a number of Holocaust survivors themselves. And you have them come through here. You, you, they lecture here at the museum, right? They are our family. We have uh, over 100 
survivors that are involved in this community from the ages of the 70s, a you know, child uh, of, of uh, kinder transport, mm -hmm. um, to survivors in their mid to late 90s. They mm -hmm. are, this is a, a family for them, not just a museum. So Geza, have you shown this uh, before audiences of Holocaust survivors already? Yeah, many countries, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and what kind of responses, reactions do you get from the people who've been through it? Well, by and large, people are very, very moved and, and, and appreciative and, and thankful even. You know, they, they wait in long lines and, and, and they just, you know, very, they, they, oftentimes they try to sit at the end of the row just in case if it's too mm -hmm. much, too mm -hmm. painful for them so that they mm -hmm. don't have to make others stand up and so they can leave fast. Mm -hmm. But generally, you know, they, they do hold out and they, they see the through, see it through. And, um, there, are, there is a, a minority and, and, and I totally understand that of, of, uh, s survivors who feel or worry that we, um, we somehow glorify the Zonder Commando member. And there are, there are people who feel like, well, those people escorted my sister and my brother to the gas chamber and this whole complicity, the ethical dimension, so to speak, the, the, the whole topic of were they collaborators, were they not, and how to deal with that. And, and there are some aggressive and very few but there are some angry people who who who, who questioned the, the 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 stand we take on this issue because we we definitely think that these people, even though they themselves feel guilty, but they are innocent in real, and the people who feel innocent and you know living in their nineties presently in small towns in Germany all all well, they they, they feel innocent, but they are guilty. So, so um, in that case, you know, with utmost patience and understanding, I do try to defend them, the Zonder Commando members, and I understand it's a complex issue. But so there are meaningful conversations. It's important uh, when one studies the history of this that they knew that the Sonder Commando in its entirety was purged three or four months at a time. Would, would you just take a moment to describe what the summer commando role was and, and why it's so controversial when he confronts people whose whose parents suffered under it? They escorted the fellow victims down the path to the gas chambers and they supervised the undressing of and keeping calm of the people that had no idea they were going into a gas chamber. They thought they were going into showers to be disinfected, mm -hmm. to put their clothing on hooks and then enter what they thought to be a shower room. Where, and, where can people see the movie now, if, if beyond this weekend? Geza, where is, where, is the movie available uh, on, on demand online? Uh, Netflix, I would say. And um, yeah, if you can buy it, the DVD on Amazon.com, I assume. Yeah, it's, it's out there. What? Okay, and you'll be speaking now to uh, some uh, audience members who've just seen the picture. Let's, correct. Let's listen to some of their remarks in your Q&A. Okay. Oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you.